Hello and welcome back to Forgotten Daily. So I was asked to do a video uh, on this Dodge Omni GLH that um, we've been working on for quite some time. Like uh, basically tell a little story about the car and the trials and tribulations that the car has given us. Uh, the fights and everything. So I'm going to try to remember everything. Um, so when we bought the car, August, late August, early September of um, 2023, it had been sitting for 23 years. And the gentleman, the only thing he knew about it was that um, the transmission had given him issues and he had it towed home. It wouldn't shift he, and he had it towed home and he parked it and that was the last he touched it. So he had taken some parts off of it because he had another one at the time. That's kind of why this one got set to the side. So anyways, um, we found it and went and got picked it up and um so originally the car was bought by me to become a parts car um and then my son decided that hey dad this would be you know a great lemons rally car for 2023 well here we are um five five four or five days we leave thursday today's saturday so whatever that comes out to be um we're supposed to be leaving and as of today, um, the car still needs the shift linkage fixed. Um, we're going to try to do a home alignment on it. Um, and I'm waiting on another brick caliber. So anyways, when we decided to do this project, um, I had it in my head that, you know, I wanted to replace all the brake lines, the rubber lines. And basically, I, I got to at least be able to stop. So... We knew we was going to replace all of that. So we ordered all the parts and stuff. And there's videos on here um, showing some of the stuff that we had bought and whatnot. So anyways, um, this car has now received every piece of brake from the master cylinder down. That's the hoses. That is the brake calipers on both sides. Rotors, pads. Um... The brake lines, steel brake lines, all the way to the rear and to every front, to each front wheel. Uh, new shoes, new springs, new wheel cylinders, uh, new wheel bearings and seals, new drums. Um, I think that's it. I don't. I don't know. I lost. I lost. I've lost count on so much stuff that this car has received. Uh, then it come to the fuel system, and of course the tank was all nasty and gross as expected. So it's got a brand new gas tank. Brand new sending unit and a brand new external mounted fuel pump. Um, the reason we went with an external mounted pump was because the one that um, an online vendor that's very popular, I won't throw their name out there, um, said the gas tank and the sending unit said they fit this car was actually for a carbureted car or a TBI car one. I don't know which one, but one for a turbo car. So we had to modify and, and do that. So, um, so then we come to the engine. Uh, we had a gentleman, a friend of ours come down from, um, and visit us one weekend. He does Hubert's projects on YouTube. Uh, and we yanked the engine out because it was froze up. So I had another engine on the engine stand that I knew was good. It come from another car. However, that engine did not have a, it was a turbo engine, but somebody had taken the turbo and eliminated it. I'm presuming the turbo went bad and they didn't want to spend the money, whatever. I don't know. But it, but the exhaust manifold was not a turbo manifold. And there was no turbo. Not a big deal. We'll take the head off of the Omni. And put it on the, the head on the block of the uh, engine. And we should be good to go. Well. The. I don't remember which one. The, the head that was on the Omni. Was completely just. The valves were white. And just gotten hot. You could tell. Um, so the, we were started to change. The exhaust manifold from the Omni to put it on the other engine ran into an issue with that cylinder head. So four cylinder heads later, I finally got one that I could use. Um, during the process of all of this, somehow we lost the intake manifold. Not one, but two. I don't know how. Don't know. No clue where they went. They, they, they were gone. So we got the engine back together. We got the headset on and, and this, that, and the other. Uh, put a new clutch and pressure plate in it and put it together. And we had it sitting here on the floor until um, I can get an intake and, and finish it. 
Um, Turbos Unleashed was nice enough. Uh, they sent what well, we paid for them, but they shipped us very quickly the new turbo lines. Because again, I wanted to replace all that because I wanted the thing to try to be make it as reliable as I can make an 86 Dodge Omni, you know, for the rally. <clears throat> well, anyways, we finally come up with an intake manifold. Um, I get it all back together and uh, get the engine set inside. I had to fight the transmission mount to get it lined up, and that was another nightmare. So. I'm out here tinkering with it one day, and I decide that, um, hey, I want to hear it crank over. And so, okay, I hit the starter, and clunk. I don't know what the heck's going on now. Well, my son ended up coming back down to help me work on it again, and, and we started looking into figure out what this clunk is and why this thing won't even crank over. Um, ended up pulling the timing belt back off. Of course, the timing belt's new, the water pump's new. Anyway, pulled the timing belt back off. Uh, the head would rotate fine, so it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the head. It's in the block. Um, ended up dropping the oil pan again because it had already had a brand new oil pan gasket. Dropped the oil pan again. And somehow, I don't know how, the water pump bolt that goes through the front was about two inches too long. And the crank was hitting it. All right, so we pulled that out. Found another bolt. I've got several blocks laying around here and whatnot. We stole another bolt. Got that figured out. Um, and I, I'm sure I'm going to forget some things along the way. Uh, we get it, we get it to where it'll crank. Um, but, um, we had no spark. So we started tracing down, chasing down, um, why we have no spark. Um, we ended up changing the hull effect. We ended up changing the logic module. We ended up changing the coil. We ended up changing the computer none of those well we had spark for like three cranks and then it would quit again so none of those seemed to fix it so we walked away for the night and uh come back out a couple days later whatever it was and put everything mounted everything because everything was just kind of hanging the computer wasn't mounted it was just sitting in here mounted it clean the grounds up really well and knock on some wood it runs well it, it ran enough on um carburetor cleaner into the throttle body at least to get here it run <clears throat> but it just didn't run right, which understandably so. So I'm trying to think what, what the next step was. Um, I don't remember, know now. So anyways, I, I was fighting with it and fighting with it and fighting with it. Um, we had the shift linkage all apart. Oh, that was that's the next thing. We had the shift linkage apart. Uh, we replaced the plastic end caps with an adjustable kit that come in another parts car I had. And um, one of the nuts was wrong. So I had to go to the hardware store and get a different nut to fit that thread. And that was another just stupid stuff. Uh, now the rod that slides into the bottom of the shifter won't go in far enough for the C-clip to go on. I'm underneath there fighting with it. And all of a sudden, ting, there goes the C-clip flying who knows where. So I had to go get C-clips. Um... I'm trying to trying to go from there. So that's that's actually still needs finished. Um, that's the last big project to do on the car. So we um, got to the we started bleeding the brakes. Um, my my stepson come out and helped me, and we bled the brakes. Got the rears, you know, mostly good. And I get to the right front. Now let me back up a little bit. Two months prior to this, I had the calipers on the workbench in the vise, and I made sure the bleeders weren't stuck because, you know, I had time to order calipers. So we get to the right front one, and sure enough, it snaps off. <clears throat> I called it a night for night, then and there. I was done for that night. I was agitated, needless, needless to say. So ended up ordering a new passenger side caliper, and I knew then I should have just ordered a driver's side and been done with it. But nope, I'm trying to, you know, stop spending so much money on this car. So the passenger side caliper comes in, I get it changed, and one of the copper washers is the wrong size. Brand new caliper, washer is the wrong size. Um, so I had to reuse one, which it was just, it was literally on there for a couple of days, so it's not, like, it shouldn't be bad. Uh, so far, we don't have any leaks, but uh, anyways... We go back to bleeding the brakes, and now the driver's side caliper wants to hang up. It won't slide all the way back in. So when you press the brakes, it just freezes up the wheel. 
So hence, that's why I now have a driver's side caliper on the way. And I should have ordered a darn thing two weeks, you know, prior when I ordered the passenger side. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, kind of jumping around. This is a exactly timed how things went. Um, we um, was putting water in it and one of the exhaust manifold bolts. And I, and I honestly didn't know this, but they thread into a water jacket. And, of course, it's leaking. So my son's underneath the car uh, trying to fix that, and I just said, well, okay, I'm going to put some, you know, some fluid in the transmission. And all of a sudden, he's, Dad, it's leaking everywhere. So now the transmission seal is leaking. They're brand new seals, and we got one leaking. So we finally get the, uh, after hours and hours of fighting, because it's, it's a very difficult position you have your hand in when you're trying to put these, you know, seal these bolts. Um, we finally get that done and then we go move over to the transmission or the, yeah, the transmission, the axle seal. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me what's going on. So I ended up pulling it out. Well, there's an intermediate shaft on these cars to make the axle shafts called equal length. And that's supposed to help, you know, with, with torch steer or whatnot. Um, sorry, it's hot out here. So anyways, the intermediate shaft I'd used was from a Daytona because I had it laying here. I didn't feel like fighting you know, to get the old one out and blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out, it's literally, I don't even think, it's, it's probably a quarter of an inch shorter. So that was not allowing the axle, the, the shaft to slide all the way into the transmission to seal it. So I ended up fighting it anyways. I should have just fought the darn thing to begin with. Um, took the car, <clears throat> excuse me, took the car uh, this past Sunday, week ago, tomorrow, to the car farm here on YouTube, um, and they were able to help me get it running. Uh, we had a bad map sensor, a bad idle air control, and um, it was out of time. And we ended up, we finally got the fuel pump hooked up because I hadn't had that done yet. Um, so we got we got that done. Uh, so now you know, like I said, at least it at least runs now. And I I keep looking at the car trying to remember, you know, what I'm what i'm trying to talk about here uh before all of this i had removed the dash because i thought you know let's replace the heater core while it's apart you know while we're here and putting the dash back in was kind of a fight the wires the way they run them you know um get it all back together finally and i'm like oh we forgot one of the plastic ducts for the dash vent whatever i don't care somebody else can worry about it later uh, so that was just another one of them dumb things. Oh, the brake lights. So um, the one tail light was broke. So I ended up getting another one. It's, it's broke too, but it's not like going to show light. It's just broke on the corner. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyways, we, um, we messed with it and messed with it because the right side wasn't working. So... We finally got it working, um, and then I got, you're going to see in, later on in another video, a little thing on the back of the car, and we had all of that stuff working, and I told my son to hit the brakes, I wanted to take a picture, and um, sure enough, they're not working again, so chasing that back down, again, that's just another thing. Um... The, oh, the driver's door panel was off the car, and the gentleman had taken um, the window regulator and whatnot. So I ended up with another car and got all that fixed. So the window goes up and down now, and blah, 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 and everything's good to go. Door's back, panel's back on, and, and it's done. Nope, it decided to break the door handle. So I had to tear it back apart again to replace the door handle. Um, the fuel pump, the fuel tank, one of the, the one strap was just, and I don't know if it's because it was a not the right tank. I don't know what was going on. It was just literally two threads away from starting on the bolt. Uh, I got agitated and after fighting with it for a long time and finally ended up cross threading and screwed it all up. So no big deal. Cut the head of the bolt off, drill a hole through the floor and ran a bigger bolt. Just another one of those things. Um, I know to, to you watching this video, if you're watching it still, this may not seem like a ton of stuff, but it, when it's, it's just a continuous, every time you touch it, something else goes wrong. It's very aggravating. Um, so right now, as of today, as I'm making this video, 
I am waiting on a driver's caliper as soon as that gets in. should be here Monday. As soon as that gets in, um, we'll get that done. The brakes should be done, hopefully. There's nothing else that I know of to go bad. So hopefully that fixes that. Uh, and then hopefully uh, I can get my buddy over here and we can get the shift linkage fixed Monday night too. Oh, another thing. Now it doesn't want, now the alternator doesn't want charge. So I've got to either swap the alternator or try to replace the brushes in this one. I haven't messed with it. I'm planning on working on it again tomorrow. Uh, I'm probably done for the day. Um, so now i got to figure out why the alternator is not charging. Um, I have no oil pressure gauge. Um, it quit working. I don't know why. I do have a mechanical gauge here that I'm going to just run it just for now, just so I can at least keep an eye on it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Just some little stuff, you know. The one marker parking light wasn't was rusted. The the socket, so I had to replace it. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it's just been one thing after another on on the little car, and I'm hoping that you know it makes it. On this trip it's uh, about 1500 miles so it's not a ton of miles it's just a ton of driving you know stop and go um back roads um you know some interstate whatnot so i don't know hopefully you know well, fingers crossed hopefully we're done hopefully we're hopefully we can take the darn thing because it just seems like it's just one thing after another you know and 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 it really sucks because i i think the car will be fun um, it's definitely not going to win no beauty contest, but neither am I, so I don't care. But, uh, anyways, um, I'm sure there's more stuff that I'm missing that I've forgotten about that I can't think of off the top of my head, but whatever, it is what it is. You're probably bored by now anyways. So with that said, wishes luck. Um, if we're ready to, if we leave, I'll do another video before we leave, hopefully. Um, if not follow us and, um, I'll try to do videos as we're as we're driving and as we're going through the rally so like follow subscribe comment let me know what you think uh if you want to see something let me know i'm willing to you know do some how to's or whatnot i was asked to do this video and um here it is so i thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day